Men of Reddit, what's the creepiest thing a woman has ever said to you? Back in college I was at a study group, and I found myself talking to this girl. Just talking about class and eventually just talking about random other stuff like life at school and favorite places to eat nearby. Then after a moment of silence she tells me that she wants to see me fight off a group of guys trying to attack her, and she would hold me while I was beaten up and bleeding on the floor. I mean just randomly dropping that on someone when a minute ago we were talking about best places to get cheap food is a bit much. Edit, for the dozens of people asking, I just kind of brushed it off and awkwardly tried to turn the conversation to something not about me getting violently beat up. Also, I had maybe talked to her a handful of times and always in class and this was the first out-of-classroom conversation I had with her. I worked at a fast food place years ago. My girlfriend came in for a milkshake and was waiting at the end of the counter with one of our regulars. Doris, the regular, was near 90 years old, and had invited me home to have pot roast at her house multiple times. I was being a pain and put about a foot of whipped cream over the top of the lid of my GF's milkshake and brought it to her. Doris looked at her, then looked at me deadpan and said, I wish you would cream me like that. Doris never ordered desserts. Was on a nearly empty plane, sitting in the last row, in the window seat. No one else was in the row. I eventually fell asleep. Woke up with a tatted up goth chick sitting next to me, eyes boring a hole through my head, just straight up staring unblinkingly at me. I look at her and I'm like, uh, hi. She stares for like five more long seconds and then exhales. Sorry, you looked like an angel sleeping with the sun on your face, she said breathlessly. We chatted for maybe another thirty seconds or so, she apologized for staring like that a couple more times, then she went back to her seat. It was surreal though. When I was younger, I worked in a bar popular with 18, 20 year olds. One night, as a group of girls was leaving, I made eye contact with one of them. That was enough. She came stumbling up to the bar and said, I have to show you the background on my phone. She put her phone on the bar, and the background was a picture of me. I took it about three weeks ago. I'm totally obsessed. Your photo is the last thing I see before I go to sleep and the first thing I see when I wake up. A few years ago, I started hanging out with this girl who was around my friend group at the time and came to trivia nights with us occasionally. Things were going well at first, but then I started noticing some odd signs. She never slept, she would do bizarre things like start her shower, then go start cooking food, then sit down and begin tending her plants as if she kept forgetting what task she was doing. She put a sign out on her lawn with her cell phone number on it wanting to connect with strangers. It got weirder as it went on. I mentioned to her once that I like thunderstorms and she became convinced that I could cause thunderstorms. At first, I thought she was joking, but it started to weird me out. Then one night when I was sleeping over, I noticed that she was just sitting in bed watching me. She put her hand on my heart and whispered that she could hear the beautiful fishes in my blood. That very morning, her father burst into her apartment yelling about her appointment with the psychiatrist that she kept avoiding. She told me that her parents and the doctors were trying to convince her that she had bipolar disorder and wanted to shut her brain off. Long story short, her friends and family convinced her to go, she bravely took on her mental illness and got help before the manic episode got out of control, and now we are very close friends to this day. I was at a baseball game with my wife. We had great seats right behind the dugout, but four young teenage girls, 13 to 14 I think, were standing near us. They got the attention of the third base player, Mike Mustakas, and, as a group screamed, Mike! I want to have your babies. That poor man struggled between cringing and staying professional. He did a half-hearted acknowledgement wave and smile, then refused to look over that direction for the rest of the game. I recently spent the weekend with a woman. We have hooked up periodically for the last 25 years. Anyways, we were chatting, and she brought up how a guy she had dated insisted he come to a doctor appointment with her. The doctor informed her that she has herpes, and the guy was disturbed by this. She was complaining about this to me hours after we had slept together. She was bitching to a guy who just slept with her that another guy was disturbed by her being diagnosed with herpes. So far I have had no blisters, but it's the last time I will hook up with her. I was once on a dating site and I started talking to a girl and one of the first things I said to her was, What are you looking for on this site? And her response was something along the lines of, Honestly, I'm looking for a sweet young man to take out for a night of drinking. Take him back to my apartment, lure him into bed, tie him up, suffocate him until he stops struggling, strip him of his flesh then donate his skeleton for science. How about you? She had an actual human skull on her desk too and worked with corpses as a forensic anthropologist. 
She held up a banana and asked if my was the same size. In the middle of a dinner rush as loud as can be, in front of about five customers and everyone on shift that night. And this was after she groped my brother's ass. Somehow, she didn't get fired for this and I still resent my former boss for not being more attentive. That if I ever called the cops on her all she has to do is lie and tell them that I hit her, and she'll make sure I go to jail. Believe it or not, I actually stayed with her for a while even after she said that. I was stupid and young and thinking with the wrong part of my body. I know we joke about exes being crazy, but she legitimately had mental illness. I bartended at a small dive bar years ago. It was late one night, and I had a lone female guest. She was probably middle-aged, polite, and short while ordering her drink. I thought nothing strange or got no red flags, so I continued my closing duty, sweeping around the tables. I'm focused on cleaning and getting out of there, and I turn around to dump dustpan, and she's standing right behind me staring me dead in the eye. Will you dance with me? She asks in a slow, nervous manner. For the record, there is no music playing, and we're the only two living creatures in the building. I tell politely that I'm closing and cannot right now, and quickly put distance and walk behind the bar. In the five seconds I need to walk through the kitchen, this guest has walked back to her stool and begun hysterically crying at the top of her lungs. She asks me if I think she's ugly, fat, unattractive, and several more derogatory things which I deny and deflect. She screams and tells me she hates me and runs out of the bar. I ring the beer she drank half of up as a waste and lock the door. I continued to work there for seven more years, and never saw this guest again. We were both eighteen and met online. Decided on dinner, movie, and hotel. It was about thirty minutes to get to her parents' house with my car. When I was about five minutes away from there, she insisted that I meet her parents, and told me that they would never let her leave without meeting me first. I considered just turning around, but figured from her parents' point of view that it would have been a massive creep move. I was angry that it got sprung on me last minute, and thought it was manipulative, but I was pretty much there anyway, and gave her the benefit of the doubt. Thought maybe the sprung it on her last minute. So I show up, and apparently the plan was for me to have dinner with them a plan I wasn't aware of. While food was being cooked, they put on dirty dancing, and my date's family is repeating lines, and singing along, as if it were the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The parents seemed to like me and said, well that's one down, one to go. While pointing to their younger daughter, who did a mean Spongebob impression, like spot on, crazy good. Next, my date disappears for a few minutes, retrieves a toddler, and plops him on my lap. In the toddler's hands was a photo album. He flipped through the book showing me his various baby pictures. I go, your baby brother is really cute. She goes, this is my son. That's how I found out she had a child at fifteen. Pretty much the entirety of the date was spent with her family, and then I went home. I was done after that, and she wasn't thrilled that I was no longer interested. About a year later she messaged me to brag that she was dating someone new. She was taken off guard by me being friendly, and not jealous for some reason. Anyway. She seemed starved for attention and basically told me about the whole situation with her new BF. One thing of note was that her boyfriend was currently in jail, but was supposed to get out in a few months. During the chat, I realized that the dates didn't match up. The time that she claimed they began dating, he should have already been in jail. So I ask her about it, and she explains that they met through a prison pen pal exchange. Yup, that's how she met the new stepdad to her kid. So not so much that was said, but more if what happened. I had been dating this girl in my late teens up to my early twenties for five years. We were on our last run, and she had done so many cringe-worthy things over this last stretch it was time for me to leave. Over the course of five years, I received many gifts and housewarming gifts, etc. from her and her family. I tell her we're breaking it off for good, and she immediately starts going off. Cheating on me, never loved me, blah blah blah. She leaves. A few days later I received a letter in the mail that had an inventoried list of things that she and her family gave me over the years, including a $300 bill for plane tickets to Los Angeles where we went to visit her dad four years earlier. She really wanted me to go so she bought the ticket. This list had about 20 to 30 things on it down to the trash can I had in my room and the curtains as well. I laughed it off and went about my business. I come home from work about two days later to find things missing from my room. The curtains were the most noticeable. A note on my desk confirms that she had come in and took most of the things on her list and that I still owe her $300. It gets worse. I call her and tell her if she returns my things, 
I won't call the cops. She begins screaming through the phone at me saying those were her things. I hang up on her and call the cops. They ask if I want to press charges, and I say no unless she continues to contact me. The only thing that sucked to lose was my favorite hoodie, the rest was just clothes and home products. I was more upset she broke in while I wasn't home. Two to three days later, I get another letter in the mail. This time there are two letters. One addressed to the dean of social work at the college she attended, and the other to me. The letter to the dean was insisting that if he heard anything about her in the news, I was the crazy one and to basically overlook whatever was said about her. Her letter to me was explaining that I made her write this letter to the dean by accusing her of breaking and entering and theft and calling the cops. Easily the most insane thing a woman ever said or did to me. There are many more stories about this woman, but this is easily the worst.